Please welcome Satish Mohan Ram, Technical Marketing Manager, National Instruments, India. Welcome to India and thank you for joining us at NI Days. Uh, I hope uh, you have a nice time here. And thank you so much for sharing those amazing applications. I think that gave us a glimpse of the power of graphical system design. And uh, thank you for launching the community. Uh, it's, it's going to take us a long way in solving the Indian challenges as well. Yeah, we're very excited about it. And uh, another thing you'll see is that in, in Austin every year at NI Week, we, ha we share some of the greatest applications from around the world. And India is always very well represented. So we're looking forward to that again, and we hope the community site can help foster and continue to grow the innovation here. That's great. Have a nice time, and uh, thank you so much again for joining us. All right, thank you. Thank you. So let me welcome all of you again to NI Days 2012, uh, our annual graphical system design conference. So you've heard of some really amazing applications that have been solved using graphical system design. Now, my job right now is to take you through this journey of how these different amazing applications can be put together with LabVIEW, right? I'm gonna do this with a simple example. Uh, an example that most of us would be using on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, most of us are aware of the level of power scarcity that we have. So inverters is something that's very commonly used in you know, our day-to-day -day life. Uh, where do we use them? Uh, we use them at home, where it, it fills in for the power shortage. Uh, it's used extensively in uh, solar farms, where there is a lot of uh, energy that's stored in batteries, which, ha which can be pumped up to the grid at some point in time, wherever required. It, al it is also used uh, off late in the automobile industry, where uh, there are hybrid vehicles which just do not use the fossil fuel. It also uses the electricity which is available to run the, uh, to run the vehicles. So these are some of the typical applications of an inverter. And what does the inverter do? In very, very simple terms, a, an inverter takes the DC signal from the battery or the DC power that is available in the battery, converts it into a power waveform or a power signal, which is the same as what we get on our power sockets, which is pure sinusoidal AC power, right? So that's the typical job of an inverter, okay? Now, I'm gonna take you through how the inverter operates, and that'll kind of give you an insight of the problem or the challenge that we are trying to solve in this particular application. So you have a battery connected to a IGBT switch. Uh, it's basically a chopper which helps us chop the DC. And the chopped DC goes to the filter and comes out as AC output. We have a 50 hertz uh, supply that we get everywhere. So we have to match to that 50 hertz. And hence, the chopping circuit is going to chop the signal at exactly 50 hertz. So how does the signal look? Uh, can, can, is this visible uh, at the back? It's, it's basically a you know, pulse waveform that you see. And that's, so if that goes through the filter, you do not get a very, very clear or a clean signal that can be given to the electronics that you have. Because there's a lot of distortion, and that distortion can at some point in time make your device non-functional, right? So to overcome this challenge, what we have to do is the THD value that you see, that is the amount of noise that's there in it the amount of impurities that is there in it. So that has to be brought down all the way to zero. And that means that our signal is exactly the same or purer, in fact, than what we get on our mains, okay? How do we do this? We introduce a controller which measures the input signal and which does the controller of the switching circuitry that we have. And the way it does the control is to ensure that you get a waveform which is as close as possible to the sinusoidal signal. So you can see here that instead of just one switch that used to happen, there are multiple switches that are happening. And hence, that has reduced the you know, total harmonic distortion, which means our signal is getting, or the power that we are getting generated from this unit 
is getting a lot more purer. You switch faster, you get much purer power coming out of it. You make it a little further, you get better. So the objective of the controller is to be able to switch as fast as it can, right? And be able to provide a signal which is as close as possible to the sine wave to the filter so that it can provide you a very clean power source which can be used all across in different types of uh, applications. So that's a typical uh, inverter operation. Now, in our challenge now, we're going to take the job of doing this controller, okay? Because the rest all is switches and uh, huge capacitors and inductors which do the filtering. So let us not get into that part. We will get into the part which is the heart of this, which is the controller. Let's see how to go about designing this. Now, I'm an engineer, like all of you here, and the first thing that I do is, whenever I'm posed with a challenge, I go to my whiteboard or to my paper and quickly write what is it that this particular controller is supposed to do. I have a measurement unit which is going to take the grid waveform because when I try to supply power to the grid, it has to be in sync with what signal is coming in. So I need to measure the frequency and phase of the signal that is being fed in as input. So I have that coming in. From there, uh, I provide the input phase to three sine wave generators because at this point in time, I'm trying to generate a three phase uh, AC signal. And that uh, sine wave generator feeds into a pulse width modulator, which is basically uh, deciding how fast and in what pattern the switching has to be done for my switching circuitry and the output goes to the actual switch which is doing the job of chopping the signal and making it sinusoidal, right? Uh, because it is power that we are generating, it is also important that we keep up the level of voltage and current that we are supposed to be bringing out of this inverter. So we have a feedback mechanism which measures the power that is being generated. It gets fed back and there is a PID on top which you see which really controls the you know, closed loop voltage control to ensure that the power levels are met. So this is my typical first step, which I would do when I have to develop a system like this. Once I'm done with this, the next thing is, you know, this powerful software that we've been talking about, LabVIEW and NIS platform. So I'm going to tell you how to go about putting this or implementing this using the graphical system design. The powerful software that I spoke about, it is, uh, engineering software. So you can develop at a really abstracted level. Do you think this is abstracted enough for an inverter? Yeah? Okay. So this is going to convert into a LabVIEW code. So I started writing a LabVIEW code, and here is what it looks like. Can you see what it looks like? It has the PID controller on top. I have the phase extractor, which connects onto a PLL, which is doing the phase locking. And that phase input is given to the sinusoids, which generate the sinusoids and give to the pulse width modulator, and that goes out to control the IGBTs, right? This is exactly how we develop the solution in LabVIEW. Or in, in other words, this is how we develop a solution using graphical system design. Now, the first step of converting what we had in the white paper to a LabVIEW code is done. The next thing that I have to do is to be able to test if it is fine. So I will quickly run this on my computer to see if the functionality that I am supposed to get is achieved using this or not. Once I'm done with that step, I would move a step further and try to put it onto a hardware which can really play the job of the inverter controller, right? So this has to now become an embedded system. That's the next step. Now, if we have to make this an embedded system, we need a platform where this graphical code can run, and there should be different types of IOs that we have to be able to interface with. Some of the IOs that we have would include the switching circuitry, then the measurement, uh, measurements that we are supposed to do, like the voltage, current, the power that we have to measure, all of that has to be done. So we need different types of interfaces, and we need a processor which is capable of handling this. Now, I said we have to switch really fast. Now that means that you cannot do this using 
a regular processor based approach because a typical processor would run step by step. You know, it, it operates or it executes one instruction at a time. So I'm going to take advantage or I'm going to leverage the FPGA technology to really implement this. Now, how do I take this to the FPGA? Because whenever I'm thinking of it and drawing it, I'm working at a level where I'm thinking floating point numbers, right? Floating point numbers to represent on the FPGA is very difficult. So I have to convert all of this to fixed point. Now, the good part about uh, not having to worry about this uh, is this graphical system paradigm, which helps you design it at an abstracted level and helps you take all of these different uh, you know, targets without having to worry about how the conversion happens into it. So let me take you through the platform that I would use for prototyping this system. It's called as the Compact Reconfigurable I.O., right? Compact Reconfigurable I.O. Why do we call this? Because it's compact, uh, it's modular, and it's reconfigurable from the point of view that there is an FPGA into which you can implement all of this logic. So quickly, I take the code that I have and hit the run button. It compiles and gets downloaded onto the FPGA. Now this is a prototype that I have built. And when we are developing prototypes, what is very important is for us to be able to try multiple combinations to see which is the best optimal operating condition. So it is always important for you to have a very intuitive user interface where you can do all those fine tunings, where you can really find out what works and what doesn't work. And that's what we do with this prototyping platform, Compact Vio, where the code is deployed and you have a user interface where you can do all the required modifications. Once this is done, it really becomes the controller which is controlling your inverter, right? So you have quickly started on a white paper, moved all the way, and prototyped it onto a platform. Now, having done this, the next step is to productize it. Because putting this huge compact Rio uh, into a solution might sometimes be challenging. And hence, we have this very nice deployment curve where, like we did from PC to compact Rio, uh, the same code from PC was deployed to compact Rio, we can take it much further down to a deployment level where we have single board Rios. This is a stripped down version of Compact Rio. It's a bare board version, if I may say. And onto that, you could quickly deploy the same code that was developed and have it running. So your product becomes ready. And as a matter of fact, what I'm showing you here is a product that was developed by NREL, one of the research labs in the US. Uh, and it is a very functionally operating inverter, which they are planning to commercialize shortly, right? So this is how graphical system design would start helping you from the design all the way to deployment. Now, think about the productivity gains that you would get. Think about how fast you would be able to deploy when you are taking an approach like this. That's exactly what we've been talking about uh, you know, in the previous lectures as well, where they were talking about different applications which have been solved so quickly and so effectively and efficiently using our platform, right? So with that, uh, I'm going to lead back into what John had mentioned in the morning. This really helps people scale down the number of people who are required for developing these embedded systems, and at the same time, brings down the time it takes. Just not this, the success of these projects are a lot better with NI's graphical system design approach than what we do traditionally, right? So I think you must be thinking, uh, this guy is doing a lot of talking. And I want to really demonstrate this with one of our customers joining me here who's developed a very interesting application. Let me welcome Mr. Kalpesh Desai from Neutron Systems to join me on the dais. Kalpesh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank you, Satish. And, uh, if, if I may quickly tell the application that you have built and kind of uh, lead him into a question. So Kalpesh builds tablet pressing machines. And uh, he's built a machine which is so efficient and amazing that he's going to come and share with us his journey of how did he go about thinking about this tablet pressing machine and how did he implement it. 
because yeah. of this, uh, for providing me this day to share my experience to uh, these people here. Sure. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, we were working with one of the tablet manufacturing company, tablet press manufacturing company, where we provided a primitive automation solution just to uh, uh, make sure their functional and operational requirement to put together with the PLC based system, right? But the overall performance of the system, uh, each tablet which is uh, getting manufactured, the tablet which I'm, I'm talking to you now is a medicine which we take for our sickness, illnesses as prescribed by the doctor. So uh, that tablet has a quality parameters, right? And uh, the machines produce, whatever tablets produced by the machine uh, do not undergo the test for the quality. So um, uh, the output of the machines were not completely uh, uh, say tested for the quality. And they were tested in tested it in a small samples, small batches. So that was uh, the bottleneck for them uh, to uh, give consistency in the quality. Alpesh, when you say quality, what do you exactly mean? Are you talking about these tablets that we take, and you're saying only batches were tested, and the rest of all uh, the you know tablets that came out didn't get tested, and we're taking them? Uh, no, uh, in in fact, not all the tablets are getting tested before okay. we take it. Okay. So that was the point. Okay. Because and the manufacturer uh, wanted that all the tablets should be checked online before uh, going it for, uh, for the consumption. That makes sense. It will make our lives a lot more safer, I guess. Right. And yeah. the, the, the parameters which is critical for the tablet are the uh, weight of the tablet that decides the dose volume, uh, the hardness of the tablet, the friability of the tablet. Uh, so these are the these all are the parameters which decides how this medicine is going to uh, affect uh, the human body after taking it. So, uh, so you have to ensure that the weight, thickness, hardness, and the friability have to be maintained. Have to be maintained throughout the each tablet produced. Okay, so that's an interesting challenge to have. So, how did you go about solving this application? Uh, in fact, before uh, say I answer your question, I would like to brief you about how the tablets is manufactured. The, Perfect. The process how that's it great. is getting manufactured. So, uh, in this uh, machine overview. Uh, you will see uh, that uh, there are several punches, right, which is running in, in a rotational movement and uh, within those, those punches there are, uh, so there is a feeder wherein the right mix of drug, they call it a formulation. So that formulation is filled in the cavity for the right uh, volume, right, uh, say weight of the tablet and then the same uh, powder form uh, is getting compressed within two different rollers, compression rolls and main pre-compression role and the main compression role here. So uh, what happens, uh, uh, the compression forces on the pre-compression and main compression decides the hardness of the tablet, the friability of the tablet, the thickness of the tablet and uh, the volume which is fed at the feeder level that decides the weight of the tablet. So all this parameter, uh, uh, all this parameter in uh, say uh, depending on each other decides the quality of the tablet, the how hard the tablet is and um, uh, it, it depends suppose as for example if I give you an example, uh, if, if we take a certain tablets like maybe everybody may, uh, may have heard of Disprint or maybe Stamatin, <coughs> that kind of tablet if we can, uh, when we take it, it gets dissolved within few seconds, right? So it is, they are all faster acting tablets and many tablets like antibiotic and all, they take much time after we take it and then uh, uh, it takes, the, it starts its effect. So uh, that phenomena is dependent upon, depending upon these all parameters. So how did you go about solving this challenge technically? Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the most important challenge was uh, not only the measurement of compression forces at, for each tablet, but also the speed at which this machine produces the tablet. So this, these machines produce tablet, uh, so. uh, more than 5 lakh tablets, 0.5 million tablets in an hour. So that was the uh, th that was the major challenge to measure uh, um, uh, the force parameters at a high accurate uh, uh, with with a high accuracy and at the same time with very high speed. So uh, e for each revolution, there are 117 tablets. Up to 117 tablets are um, uh, say getting produced, and the machine runs at up to 80 rpm. So you can uh, say, uh, you can uh, say imagine the speed at which we need to do the measurement and control. That's great. So you're making these tablets by pressing them. So you need to control the force. Yeah. You need to be able to run it at a high speed. Yeah. At the same time, measure the dimensions of the tablet 
as, as and when it gets produced. So how did you solve this? Uh, in, fact, in fact, because of uh, the high speed accuracy and uh, the high speed data processing and decision making, the only uh, platform which came to our mind was NI. Because this place was early, early designed with the PLC. And uh, it is not going to, uh, say, um, uh, give results uh, at this speed and measurement. So uh, there, there were three main points which we need to, uh, say, um, go for the compact video platform and uh, the GSD um, uh, graphical system design platform. One was the high speed uh, and high accuracy, uh, uh, say, compact video modules of uh, force measurement. That is 24 bit and uh, say 50 kilo samples per second, that module. Then the FPGA, because they, they FPGA allowed us to uh, accept and reject tablet at such a high speed after processing uh, uh, such a high stream of data. We need to take samples of, uh, yeah, we need to take samples of uh, uh, say uh, uh, around 100 samples for uh, for each tablet, and each tablet remains under force for our around uh, two to three milliseconds only. So such a high uh, stream of data, we need to find out the peak values. We need to find out the dwell time under which the uh, each tablet remained under pressure. So these That's all right. are the, uh, the areas where we need to go for, uh, say, compact video platform. That's and awesome. We build the system on. We, we started uh, say building prototype on this uh, compact video platform. Okay. So are these in production? Uh, being used in production in some of the uh, yes yes is this definitely uh, uh, say under production and the, the machine which I'm talking to this 117 uh, tablets per hour that is running in Kedila Pharmaceuticals Limited Dolka. That's great. That's great. So uh, I think this is a really amazing application, which is which I guess touches each and every one of our lives because uh, all these medications that we take unless they go through such high level of quality manufacturing uh, would would not treat us the right way they are supposed to. So thank you so much for sharing this application. It was great thank having you, you here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.